Well, the ANZ Premiership Grand Final, the Pulse 56 over the Stars 37. We'll start with the Pulse, the 2022 champions. Adina, I'll start with you. Your thoughts on their performance. It took them three minutes to actually score, but once they did, they were just uh, in control the whole time. They finished the first quarter 15-6. I mean, who would have predicted that sort of scoreline in a final 20-odd goals? So you've got to take your hat off to the Pulse, and in particular, Yvette McCausland jury coming back this year, getting the recall after what was a crazy year for the Pulse last year. But I certainly wasn't picking such a big margin. But I'm wrapped, actually, for the region. I think what I love about the Pulse is they pack their stadiums out every week they've got a massive stadium they've got a huge fan base and they absolutely deserve to have the final at home uh, we've got players throughout the court that have stood up all season kelly jury uh, christiana manua um the shooting end maddie gordon coming back into the uh, into the fray late in the season so yeah a spectacular effort from a team that was exceptionally coached jenny yeah, there were a lot of fairy tales, wasn't there? I mean, there were enough fairy tales there for, you know, a, a volume of Grimm's fairy tales, just about. But um, I, I have to be honest, I was disappointed in that margin. I mean, a 19-goal grand final was uh, was disappointing. But as a spectacle, um, and I was thinking too, it was good that it was there and not up here, uh, because, of course, the home crowd, they got their fairy tale. But there were, you know, players... I mean, Ericana Pedersen, for me, was one who... You know, that's cool. Um, she played for the Tactics for however many years, came second a couple of times, got the win. Uh, I was really pleased for Jury and Manua. Uh, I've always been a bit of a fan of Christiana Manua, right back to when, you know, Magic Days, and then I've been watching her over playing for the Giants. So, you know, terrific. But um, as I say, I, I do wish it had been a little closer. Can we speak about the power of a vet? Because the only time the polls haven't been in the grand final was last year when Yvette wasn't coach, but also it is the youngest team in the competition as well. So your thoughts, Dean, and I thought Wednesday night, we did speak to uh, Yvette on Netball Zone, but you could see she was sitting there on her lounge. And I just think she would have been sitting there picking apart the Stars game. And she just, I think, had a mastermind plan and she broke them down completely in the grand final. Mastermind is the right word, I think. And actually, I went back and listened to our pod uh, right at the start of the season when we talked about the Pulse. And, and they had the most changes as well. I think only Magic had the same number of changes to personnel. And then you put in Yvette McCall's and Jury. And there's certain coaches we all know that we've played under, that we can see from the sideline as fans, that have something special about them. And that really can draw the best out of the players. And you can hear the players speak about them in the manner that they hold these coaches. And Avit McCausland jury is one of those. We heard after the game just the respect that the girls have for her. And I, I think, yeah, she's just clever with how she can pick apart a game. She always looks so calm and composed on the sidelines. And one of my best bits that I enjoy from the broadcast too, is when you hear her speaking to the players at those quarter breaks, very specific, um, constructive feedback that she's given. And as she says it, you can feel yourself nodding along going, absolutely right didn't think about that so look she is a special coach and it's awesome to hear um, that she's coming back for the pulse next year but also don't forget why tamano she sits in the background for the pulse as well as does sandra edge i understand she comes in and does the odd session and hence whitney soonis has been on fire so they've got some great coaching pedigree in that wellington region jen yeah well they have and i think the other thing we shouldn't forget is that um, you know yvette's done the hard yards if you go back to the beginning of the anz championship and, and the Pulse, you know, was not quite the champion team we see. And, and she was there, I can't remember now for how many years, but she did that time, went away. And it's interesting just watching her, you know, grow as a coach. But I, yeah, I take your point, Adine, that the, the whole franchise, um, I think, should be applauded because it's, uh, they put on, a, you know, a great show. And uh, boy, I'm sure there'll be probably a few sore heads still in Wellington <laughs> today.
And what I love about Yvette too is she's one of those coaches that players will follow into battle and you want to play for them. And we spoke to her after the grand final and she said she made the girls, she they practiced for double overtime and she was making them do shuttles in between. So they did overtime, they did shuttles. She said, Christiana looked at me and said, Yvette, do you know we have a grand final this weekend? <laughs> and Yvette said, trust me, we will prepare for everything because then when it becomes comes to game day we are prepared and the game will be easy so to think they're going into that prepared for double overtime you could see it out there i think and you could see the fight that they had now if we turn our attention to the stars we wondered had they played their grand final on wednesday night i don't think they did i think they played very well they had all the momentum going into the grand final they had seven wins in a row but they just didn't have it on the day dean I was just perplexed really because I agree with you Court. I thought they had all the momentum they had their mojo about them I think it was seven wins in a row that they went into that final with and then it was almost like the stuffing got knocked out of them in that first quarter and they never got back into it a couple of times I thought here they go they're gonna make a run and then it might have been a missed shot or you know just those little one percenters which they had been nailing in those last seven games. And when I looked at some of the stats, they only scored off nine of the 20 balls that they turned over. So they were getting opportunities from their defense. They were picking up ball, but they couldn't put it through the hoop. And to me, it wasn't lost just because of shooting percentage or in that shooting circle. It was lost right throughout the court and um, the midcourt, bringing it through little errors that sort of crept in, balls going out the side of the court. So all of a sudden, that confidence we'd seen them play with for weeks now just seemed to slowly evaporate. And even when they went on those big pushes, credit to the pulse, they just shut it down pretty quickly and then moved on again in their own direction. So that wasn't the stars that we've seen in the last few weeks. And you could see the absolute devastation on both the, the players' faces and in coach Kitty Wills. Yeah, well, it's funny enough, it's, it's Kerry Wills that I was wanting to talk about because, you know, we've talked about Yvette quite rightly. But to me, Kerry Wills has really shown herself this season as a, a coach. Like, she's, there, are, there have been moments in various games where we've captured little snippets or little pieces where she's been speaking to the players or just the little asides to Paula Smith on the sideline. I'm thinking, yeah, you know, and, and the the speech was it a speech that um, she made before the game i think it was to it was to us anyway in preview and just talking about how you know the stars were here for south auckland and they she talked about she drew on their community and what it had been through through covid and i mean i found myself you know just about Same. <laughs> tearing up because it was powerful and i thought wow that's really motivational now as it turned out you know it didn't work but um and i can understand gosh they would have been you know disappointed but uh i know there were some comments afterward after the game about you know saying well they were just glad to be here i'm sure they weren't just glad to be there i think that was probably just sort of words said for the camera but uh look who knows what will happen next season um we'll just have to wait and see but man um 19 goals that's just gutting i think a shining light for the stars though you would have to say was ellie temu from that first whistle, she was turning ball over. Unfortunately, when it got down the other end, Kelly Jury did the exact same thing, got the ball back for her team. But she was a standout and a shining light for the Stars, even in the grand final. Oh, she's been simply outstanding all season. And what just got really interesting is the news that Karen Berger is out for the Commonwealth Games. Does that open up even a bigger opportunity for Ali Temu? I mean, she kept Kayla Johnson on the bench. I mean, Kayla Johnson, so many have touted as being, you know, one of the saviors for the Silver Fern potentially at the Commonwealth Games. Well, you can't go past Ellie Temu. Surely, surely she's going to push really close for a position in that fern spot. But I think what really worked in her favour well is we've got to give credit to Anna Harrison. I think those two really just connected. They gelled. You could see the energy and the fizz between the two of them. And their two games really complemented each other. And no doubt, and we've heard Ali speak as well about her respect 
for Anna Harrison. And I feel like that's part of the reason Anna came back was to give back a little bit and support those younger players coming through. And I think she's done exactly that with Ellie Temu. And she would have to be one of the performers of 2022. But one thing I found myself thinking about was, well, is that one thing that happened to the stars? I mean, they had had, what, 10 games in a month, I think. Was it just one game too far? Because, you know, they did look really flat. Uh, I mean, I, I, you know, I'm sure they will be having the biggest debrief in the world. But um, I don't know, that was just, well, because I was thinking that that would be a strength because you'd be just in the groove, you'd be playing so much, you're on a roll. But do you, do you need a final series? Do you need, you know, a best of three, a best of five? They do it in the NBA, which probably a lot of us are watching at the moment. Um, you know, I think the ANBL does it. Because then you might get a blowout like that, but then you get a chance for the other team to come back like it's not all over. Or is it, is it best this way, you know, sudden death? I'm sure Netball New Zealand might not have <laughs> the deep pockets of the NBA, but uh, it might be um, quite a nice generator for them. Well, I like sudden death, to be honest. Not when it finishes like that. And Anna Harrison, thank you for bringing her up. Adine was my next point. I think we have to just take our hats off to her, to everything she's given to the game. If we start looking at our international segment, though, we spoke about Cardin Berger. Places are opening up. Yeah, it's certainly going to be interesting who's going to fill in that that cut and burger roll, but just trying to predict anything to do with the Silver Ferns is, is going to be fascinating. And there were so many performers this year. And I think as well, um, Alia Dunn's another really interesting one that I think she really stood up in that final. When I look at her, 44 from 47, 94% in a pressure situation in a final. She finished at the top of the stats for all shooters. Yes, Grace Wicker did miss a few games, but she too who has really been stepping it up. And, and it's just her vocabulary that I've loved this year as well. You can you can kind of feel a little shift in Alia and a little bit more spark, a little bit more desire in what she wants to achieve. So as A, the Silver Fern selections come up, but also this contracting period, Jen, that's opened up, we're potentially going to see a bit of movement over the next wee while. And I'm sure there'll be a few from that Pulse team that a few will be targeting. Well, you talk about contracting, and as far as I, I'm pretty sure that uh, Dunn and I think also Paris Mason have both signed for the, the basketball yes. team in the, um, the Wellington region. So, I mean, they'll be busy doing that. But uh, I just think perhaps I, I feel so much for Karen Berger. I mean, I think I vaguely remember her, that injury in the game the other day, and, and it didn't look particularly serious. But, I mean, often they're the ones that are the bad ones. Uh, I mean, what did we, we looked at Maturo the other day and she looked as though she'd done an ankle or a knee and then she just sort of hobbled about and got going again. But, uh, no, I really feel for Berger. The one consolation, I suppose, is that she's got a World Cup to aim for next year. 